So welcome. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah. As a starter, let me tell you a story. The story of a young student that was looking for an internship to get graduated. When he met a founder of a startup in the making, this was the challenge that he was looking for. <laughs> I was this student. My name is Jeremy Calles, head of operation at Ricardo. And I will start where it all began. I joined in April 99, a newly developed auction website, badly coded by one of the two founders. <laughs> I joined as a trainee with two friends that you can see here. And I was employee number, number four. I put my hopes and my dreams into each line of code I was producing in this brand new legacy code. We were developing fast on code parts that are still on production today. By the way, Ricardo still rely on Visual Basic App to close our articles today that I built when I was a trainee 20 years ago. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Canoxion! As I said, I didn't start from a blank page. Visual Basic, Classic ASP, Microsoft sucked. And that was highly emotional for me. I tried my best to get rid of this crap, but I, it did not go that way. After we failed to move to Oracle and Java Enterprise Edition, Microsoft audited us and just gave give me one of my first important lessons. Instead of complaining that it does not work, use it properly. We quickly stopped to complain about this Microsoft base code. Our chance, to, our chance to find a better tooling at that time. And we had to rush on adding new features. Why? Why? Because competition was hard and winners take it all. No time to reboot. As a team, we only had one solution if we wanted to be successful. We had to deal with this legacy code. We had to conquer it. We had to own it. And at this stage, you might be wondering which company I'm talking about. Ricardo? Actually not. I started in April 99 as a trainee, and I was hired three months later at Auckland, a French auction website. <laughs> and this is why Ricardo has an engineering center in France, another legacy. Like a startup garage, second-hand goods lying everywhere on the floor. I loved it. We had this pioneer mindset to spread, uh, with the goal to spread auctions all over Europe. And I had the chance to get out of school exactly at the beginning of the internet bubble, with millions flowing everywhere. A few months later, a startup from Bach, founded by two brothers, unveiled its website, auction24.th. Their goal was to create a, a, an auction website to sell cheap goods from China. And as a side feature, anybody could list and, uh, and sell their items as auctions for free. In March 2000, the two founders sold Auction24 to Ricardo the D, and they left. And this is when Auction24 became Ricardo.ch. One month later, a UK company bought, uh, bought uh, Ricardo.d. And as QXL Ricardo was about providing auction websites all over Europe, Ricardo.ch moved to a pure auction website with one main focus, end users. What a buzzword. Yes, sure, but Ricardo was leaving it. Year after year, customer care became one of the most strongest departments and the most listened to. Each end user was important, and I've been asked many times to spend days to solve issues that only one end user had. Relationship between engineering and customer care was strong and direct. That was great. In November 2002, Ricardo, uh, QXL Ricardo bought Auckland, the company that I was working for. Any guess on how much? A penny. For a penny, yes, that was just after the internet crisis. And this is how I'm the oldest employee still working at Ricardo. 
few years later, in 2006, January 3 a.m., we lost the track of a van that was carrying lots of servers crossing the Swiss border to go to Zurich. Roaming was too expensive at that time, and I didn't know that it was blocked at the customs. But I was worried. I was worried by the fact that we had no more redundancy to run the future of Ricardo. Let me explain how I get there. Ricardo CH was representing more than 65% of the revenue of the QXL Ricardo Group. Thanks to that, Ricardo CH had the luxury to run on its own platform. All the other companies were consolidated on the so-called Auckland platform, the Microsoft one, the one I was working for. And Ricardo was so successful that, uh, that the platform had the issues to handle the load. Every single Sunday, during months, at peak time, it was down for two hours. Such a nightmare that the board of QXL Ricardo decided that we should migrate Ricardo.th to Auckland Platform. Wow. Auckland Platform will have to handle three times more load. That, this is challenging. I loved it, and I put a lot of sweat with a few colleagues to adapt to Ricardo business logic and to move the server hosted from Paris to Zurich. You remember the van? Oops, sorry. <laughs> and I was proud that my team was finally running all the websites of the group. Two thousand eight. Naspers bought Quixel Ricardo. At that time, after Google and Facebook, Naspers was the third biggest internet, mo internet mobile provider on the planet due to the size of their share portfolio. Naspers, a 100 years news company from South Africa, still owned by the family of the founder, moving toward digital. Sounds familiar? At that time, Ricardo was in Switzerland, the number one online auction uh, website by far, and the number two in page views, just behind Google. All the C-level from QXL Ricardo, Ricardo CH, and several managers sold their stock options and ran away. A complete new story started. New CEO, new CTO, new strategy every two to three years. We did not know anymore what we were fighting for. The owner and the manager were more concerned about short term rather than creating values for the user. We lost the initial, the initial vision and focus. Ricardo CH was internally, internally called our cash cow. Our users, our users love to call customer care. Great, let's monetize it and make them pay one franc per minute. It has broken the link with the end user. I have strong memory about users saying why they loved e uh, Ricardo and not eBay. This was because instead of speaking with robots, you had the, the kind people that were caring. Big user or small user, you had the feeling that you were important. And what else can we do if we don't touch Ricardo to grow? Let's try to open new countries, for example. Austria, Greece, India. And I can give you tons of other examples, but one recurring request when nobody knew what to do to increase the revenue was, let's optimize the pricing model again and again and again. But nothing was bringing us to the next level. We had to sell and close all the countries except Switzerland. Step by step, we started to lose the trust that, that, was hardly, that was hard earned. We lost the trust in each other, and our collaboration was everything but efficient. The cash cow was not trendy anymore, and engineering was guilty. If you know what it is, the rest of Ricardo's story started here, in this building. It restarted with Tamedia. 
core engineering team came to support us on fixing our engineering problem, our legacy problem. Who knows? Maybe you were here at TX in 2017 when our CTO, Jeremy Seitz, explained our plans to reboot the platform to microservices, Kafka, Kubernetes. After an easy start with the creation of the new platform, the deployment of, of uh, the API, the transformation of the engineering mindset, and the closest um, collaboration with PM and design. In a few months, we had 80% of our page views on the new platform. But once the easiest parts were addressed, we started to be blocked by legacy. We tried to avoid it, but we exhausted all the possibilities. If we want to succeed, we had to solve this legacy problem. So how? How to conquer 19 years of legacy? My answer is in three points. Secure our revenue. Own it and work as one team. Secure our revenue. I don't know how you feel, but from my side, I get ashamed when end users inform customer care before we know we have an outage. When a board member informs our CTO before we know we have an outage, I get ashamed. And when the legacy code is crashing and nobody wants to touch it, I get ashamed. With all the changes deployed to production, suddenly, website was crashing every single day. We forgot that the legacy was what our end users were actually using. And the pieces of code where our, our revenue is coming from. So let's call it revenue code, then. And to decrease distractions, we had to be in control. To be in control, doctors usually put probes all over the body to get more information, information about the situation. At Ricardo, we didn't, not, we didn't have any clue about what was going on. After a few months, I feel stupid that I resisted such a long time to build this WhatsApp Ricardo dashboard on which we can easily see the business metrics and user satisfaction from our legacy platform and the new platform, showing when things are, going, are, are fine and when things are not working. It has helped us not only to get one entry point for monitoring, but to increase the confidence after a deployment and be fully transparent to our, our, to our, our stakeholders. Customer care loved it. We need it first to have situation under control, and this is achieved. But now, when we have an, an emergency, we need doctors to fix it. Yanel, <laughs> Yanis and Daniel are two of these doctors, and we call them on-call engineers. When I rebooted on-call, I had the one picture in mind, a picture of people who care value work-life balance, and do one call with a smile. Why I had, the, the, why I had this picture in mind? <laughs> because when I was on call 20 years ago, I had, and, uh, I had to drive to the office when I get paid at 3 a.m. And my modem, my, uh, my modem at that time didn't want to connect. So to finally discover that this was a fake alert. When we used to get up to 4,000 SMS per week, this is when we stopped caring. And when I joined, we didn't have any chance, not to, uh, any choice to be on call or not. When team grow, on call is limited to few only, and most of the engineers didn't care about our nights and weekends. It's about responsibility. It's about moral and value. And as head of operations, I want engineers who care. And here is what I dreamed of. I dreamed of on-call guy feels stressless and will be ultimately be paid for doing nothing. Yes. 
<laughs> like a security agent in a Swiss bank, because we all know that nothing happened at night in Switzerland. <laughs> I dreamed of having volunteers and motivated people willing to join on call, because you will learn practice, you will feel the production, you will understand uh, the big picture, and you will understand how um, your daily work will affect stability. Because it makes them better developers and gives them the sp possibility to spread this mindset um, inside their team. I dreamed of anyone can join, back-end, system, front-end, whether you are junior or senior. Because this is not about speciality, this is about following a process. And because this is not about superheroes, this is about teamwork. So how did we transform on call? We needed clear goal and a mindset change. And a mindset change sorry. First, communicate. Communicate to the stakeholders to improve transparency. Communicate, oops, communicate internally to organize the work. And you should never feel alone. Don't fear to escalate. Mitigate fast. Fix during business hours. And install post-mortem culture to inspect and adapt on practice, on resiliency, and to never be overwhelmed anymore by 4,000 SMS per week. And after two years, I'm really proud that we have a clear mindset change that goes beyond on call. Volunteers can join and leave easily and newcomers are sent on the front line just after two days of training. With the situation under control, we are ready for our, our next quest to own the legacy code. Rebooting the legacy platform and having the goal to move to event sourcing, microservices, DDD, Kubernetes, started to show the first result. It has boosted the motivation of the team, of the engineering team that was struggling. We had a new architecture, uh, a clear vision, engineering goals. Suddenly, most of, uh, of the engineers were proud to be part of a team working on latest technology. And Ricardo had far less difficulties to attract new talent. But step by step, we lost the momentum. After the first month of euphoria, we end up with chaos. We were late and lost in complexity. And motivation was slowly getting down again. Did you know that octopus could be ruling the world, but won't? They are, they are intelligent and solve problems with creativity. But they are damned, because each individual has no chance to share their learnings. The babies always have to start from scratch. We started to lose the trust that was hardly earned. Because like baby octopus, we started from scratch and we did not choose the lesson from the past. After many failed trials in the past, we failed, we failed into the same trap again. Rebooting a feature set, uh, 19 years of feature sets that almost nobody knows was much more complex than initially thought. So how to rewrite a code that you don't understand? How to rewrite business logic that nobody knows? During months, I was struggling on, let's people try, let's give us a chance, maybe I will be surprised. I didn't want to play the veteran with sure that he knows everything. It's sometimes hard to find the right balance. Until that day, when I come to my boss, outraged, and told him that we failed and that I will prepare a plan B. And with the help of many engineers, we did an extensive review of the issues. And noted, and noted the following, for example. In the My Page section of Ricardo, we had eight different pages to uh, show the sales. Let's make only one and just add filters. Suddenly, the website is easier to understand and we have much less work to do to migrate. If we want to succeed this time, we need to 
inject the legacy replacement in the company focus and make radical decision and simplification of the product. Migrate and merge only most used feature with a short decision process. But with 6,000 store procedure, 2,000 tables, 87 servers, I would say VM at that time, to run the legacy platform, where to start from? Ask every engineer, even the newcomers, to get their hands dirty in the revenue code, to finally stop to guesstimate. Ask anybody to shrink the revenue code to make it, uh, it will be easier to understand. Ask SRE team to finalize the cloud migration and ask PM to get to know the business rules and understand the, what values it brings to the user. In other words, own it. Our last point was teamwork. Because one of our legacy uh, at Ricardo is to be located in different countries. And Ricardo was organized in silos. So Ricardo is working today with distributed team. If you, whether if you work in France, in Serbia, in Switzerland, you can join any of them. France was not inviting in some of the meetings, and I remember many times when we had to call on landline to finish the meeting because the sound quality was so bad. We fixed our communication tool, but we are still humans, and sharing beers together also help. No matter if you are working two desks away, at home, or in another country, we have done everything to lower the proximity barrier. And as I said, Ricardo was organized in silos. Ricardo CH, Auto Ricardo, category manager, biz dev, marketing, customer care. We um, had opposite goals and visions. We ended up with 17 goals last year. Each team tried to do what they believed was right, but we were all wrong. Someone, was telling, uh, someone told me once, company culture is not about team building. It's about building together. How could you build trust when you need engineering to achieve your goals, but they are busy on doing something else? To move forward, we need to collaborate with all the departments and rebuild the company culture that was hidden, hidden behind years of internal competitions. Newcomers needed to understand the product. Without much info, it was lost in years of fight and strategy changes, like we should become the Alibaba of Switzerland. We, lost, we all lost the purpose of Ricardo, and we needed a hard reboot. And this sentence is from Francesco Vas, our CEO. And this is when management unveiled the Ricardo Manifesto to show us the way. We are finally getting back on the roots. But why do I think it will work this time? Because all the departments are contributing to the same Ricardo. And we have only five goals today. We iterate on few initiatives, on a six weeks planning cross department. And after years of departments fighting uh, against each other, we restart to love all together. A mindset change, which is not only in engineering, but shared with all the departments. I slowly start to see the emergence of one team, and I see people caring. We may finally have discovered that technology does not overcome legacy. The team does. So how we conquered cared, <laughs> 19 years of legacy? We still have our main SQL Server database, called DBNU, created 18 years ago after a database crash, and that was supposed to stay a few weeks only. And we still have a Visual Basic app to close our articles. 
But thanks to the reduction of the legacy footprint, we are now fully running on Google Cloud. Revenue code is under control, monitored, and stable. And owning it has helped us on the how to slice it step by step and decrease the fear of breaking something. People were hard to convince. I had to pitch it every single day. But we learned that technology is not what will, what, what will solve our legacy problem. Technology is just a short-term improvement before becoming our next legacy if we don't pay attention. But to finally conquer the legacy, we needed two more steps. The first one was a clear vision of the purpose of Ricardo. A purpose that is not about how to make more money, but how to help to solve our end-user problem. And more importantly, to be able to work together as one team, be respectful, and believe in the contribution of each employee. In five days, I will enjoy my 20th anniversary at Ricardo. I will enjoy, and not because I'm breaking records. I will enjoy because after an amazing start, we lost ourselves during several years, and we are finally recovering. When I met my friends, asking me why I'm still working at Ricardo, I don't know what to say. I have no clue. I have, I've taken so many hits, but I learned every day. I could have escaped so many times, but I did not. I did not because I never lost my faith. My faith in Ricardo, in all the moments of joy that we bring to our users. And I did my best every single day to make this, re this rebirth to happen. My last word would be for our end users. I would like to thank all of them that even <coughs> if during several years we did not take them seriously, they are still using Ricardo.th. Thank you for your patience. We are getting back on track. That's it. <laughs>